Hi everybody, so this is option two for our fall Aspen artwork. And so this, uh, this option involves markers as our coloring tool. Markers and you will also need water and a paintbrush. This also works a little bit better if you have slightly heavier paper. Copy paper can work, but it, it's going to be a little bit uh, thin and uh, you're, you might have some leaking through. So in whatever kind of paper you're using, you are going to want to protect your surface. So I have old newspaper here I'm going to put underneath and I probably should have it going out a little bit further, but I'm going to try to be really careful when I use my water. And so for this one, I'm going to lay this one aside. You're going to also, if you, I'm not sure if you watched option one or not, but you're going to also need two papers. And so this is going to be my background paper. So for this, this one, you can see, I kind of have a bluish kind of a background here. For this one, I'm going to try to do more of maybe like a red-orange kind of sunset-y kind of uh, background for this one just to show you a different option. So what I'm going to do, and these are water-based markers, just plain old Crayola. If they're washable, that will work. Um, if they're the normal water-based, that will work. Permanent markers do not work for this. Um, so if you have fancy permanent markers, you want to save those for something else and just only use water-based for this. And so what I'm going to do to start, I'm just kind of sketching in a little bit of uh, some edges, really, with the marker. And so I'm not trying to really do anything super neat. And this is going to form a little bit of a frame around your artwork, too. So just a little color here. Maybe I'll get a little bit heavier with the orange towards the bottom here. And maybe a little bit up here, too, just for blending purposes. You can blend more than two colors. You just don't want it. You don't want to go too crazy with making a lot of different colors. You don't want to, for instance, blend something like, um, like blue and orange together necessarily all together. Maybe if you keep it kind of separate, but that's going to make sort of a brownish kind of look. So I have clean water here. Um, I'm going to choose this brush it's a little fluffier if you just have one brush that came with your um maybe a watercolor set you have or something that will work too but what i'm going to do is just start brushing over the color and because it's water based it's going to kind of reliquify that color and i'm keeping a really nice wet brush again it's a great idea to make sure you're protecting your surface that you're working on. You don't want to get this all over the place. And so just kind of really nice, smooth, horizontal kind of back and forth strokes with your um, your brush. I'm thinking kind of it might look nice if I had a little yellow down here. I might do that really quick. So you can see you can make some changes as you're going. If you catch it, you don't want to let the part of it really get totally dry or it's going to be kind of um, street. It, this You'll be able to see a lot of marks the way it's dried. Let's see how that turns out. Why not give it a shot? So, so I'm going to still kind of continue this kind of back and forth. Trying to blend it softly. Don't worry, if your edges really bother you, if you don't like the way that looks, when it looks a little bit more like a stripe around, you could trim that that little bit off if you really don't like that after it's dry. Don't trim it while it's wet. I kind of don't mind that look. Let's see if my yellow blends in a little bit. Just to give a little more of a golden appearance down here. All right, so just gonna, I don't wanna go over it too much. 
I want to be kind of gentle, especially if I am using thinner paper, just so that it doesn't tear. And a quick hint about this too, after your paper is dry, it's probably going to be kind of wrinkly. If you are fortunate enough to have uh, maybe some masking tape and a board, you could tape your paper down to it and that would keep it from getting super wrinkly. Um, but definitely don't worry about that. I don't have that myself. So I'm going to take this and move it to a safe place to dry. Let's see. And that's going to be my background. So with my next paper, I'm going to work on creating my trunks for my tree. So for that, I'm going to use my black marker. Again, my same uh, water-based Crayola marker. And I'm going to just draw some lines down reasonably straight but i don't want them to be perfectly straight because this is the trunk of a tree and so we want it to be natural so i'm just kind of making some stripes and what i'm doing here with these stripes let's see i'm going to just make another one kind of over here so this would be four tree trunks i may not even need them all you can see on my original, I have three tree trunks. So that way, if you have one that you don't like as well, you can not use it. Or maybe you want to have four. Maybe you want a lot of trunks. You can make as many as you want. So I have our stripes. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do work on maybe this little area right here. Because it you have to be a little bit patient. So I'm just going to make some lines kind of and so this this is two trees that are touching right now two trunks so and i don't want to be uh make a pattern or anything i want it to be kind of as random as possible and kind of just some curved lines if you think about when we uh looked at the aspen trunks in my yard they had that whitish look so and then the the darker areas there are kind of lines around it that make the, our aspen trees so unique. And so, kind of like that. And then also, if you remember, some of those areas, it looks sort of like eyeballs. Or just eyes, I guess not eyeballs. But those are where the old branches have kind of fallen off and left a bit of a scar behind. So there's my basics. And now I'm going to take my paintbrush again. And I don't want it too wet this time. I have a tissue here. I'm going to just blot it a little bit. And so I'm going to kind of go in and soften this a little bit. I'm just kind of, kind of dabbing at it from the center. And a black marker tends to have a bluish appearance when it's wet. That's okay. We're not going to worry about it being having that bluish appearance I think it still looks pretty good so I'm just kind of going back and forth like this and the same thing over here even though this is just space just so it has that sort of shaded kind of appearance I don't want to scrub the whole thing in because I don't want to just a blue gray trunk I want to leave some white but I'm just kind of going in like that and so I would do that all along both of these or all of these, I guess I should say. And so, kind of maybe go in a little bit. But I would do that to all of my trunks. And then I would also put this aside to dry. One thing you're gonna notice I totally forgot to do was put a newspaper under this paper. Um, fortunately, I have a board under here to protect, but don't uh, forget to protect whatever surface that you're working on. So we're going to pretend like I have all of these trunks blended in. Um, remember, you know, you're, you're kind of sharing a line with two. So that one got kind of wet. I didn't blot my brush, but you're going to keep on doing that for all of your trunks. Put this aside to dry as well. That's where we stop on day one. So don't worry about trying to figure out how to put this all together yet. If you get done early and you have some free time, you can work on a drawing of your choice or explore the virtual classroom. I will see you later, guys. Have a great day.